it's only snow. Winter had come to the island once again, and with the winter came the Christmas season. The weather was frosty and cold, but the edges didn't mind. They loved this time of year, when the stations looked jolly in their decorations. There was plenty of work to do. Passengers and parcels needed delivering, no matter what the weather brought. One morning, the big engines were at the station, waiting for their respective trains to start. Thomas was there too having returned from helping Russell and Paxton in the yard. Driver says there's more snow on the way, Richard said, looking at the sky. We'll soon be wearing our snow ploughs, muttered James. Oh, I'm sure some would enjoy that, Henry joked. Won't you, Thomas? Thomas snorted crossly. You know I won't, he huffed. I don't like my snow plough. Never have, never will. And he huffed away to take on coal. That night, the wind picked up, and the heavy snowfall came. By morning, the weather had cleared, but the island was covered in a dense white blanket. The fat controller came to see the engines. He told them they were to have snowplows fitted. And you, Thomas, he added, as you'll be heading back to your branch line, I want you to pick up a special from the yard. It's needed for the town party at Farquhar. Thomas was excited about his special but not about his snow plough. Please, sir, my plough is awkward and uncomfortable. Do I have to wear it? Everyone has to wear a snow plough, I'm afraid, replied the fat controller, and he left. Soon, the fitters, his driver and fireman, all helped with fitting Thomas's snow plough. Suffice to say, the job proved rather difficult. <laughs> we'll have to try that again, laughed the driver. Big, horrid, awkward thing. Thomas grumbled. He was much happier when he found out what his special was. Why, it's a large Christmas tree. It's to be put up as the centrepiece for Farquhar Town Square, Russell explained. Make sure you get it there safely. Oh, I will, replied Thomas, and he puffed off. Soon Thomas was well on his way. His snowplough cut through the snow like butter, and soon arrived at the junction. Toby was there, waiting for him. He had fixtures for the tree, and other items for the party. The town will be delighted with that tree, he smiled. I'm glad you're wearing your snowplough. I can't get through that snow by myself. In that case, Toby, follow me, said Thomas, positioning himself ahead of Toby. Then they set off. The snow became deeper and deeper as they went. Thomas found himself having to work harder than he expected to get through. Then there was trouble. Just after they crossed the river bridge, Thomas couldn't see that some of the inner snow had formed into hardened ice. As he charged through, the hardened ice struck the plough. Bouncing buffers, Thomas gasped. My plough's loose. Quickly, the driver shut off steam and slammed on the brakes. With a shuddering groan, the train finally stopped. The crew dismounted and inspected the damage. Huh, that's torn it, said the driver. We can't go any further without a plough, and there's no one to help us. But the town needs their tree, pleaded Thomas. Let me try again without the plough. I'm sure I can make it. The crew looked doubtful, but Toby interjected. It might not be the best idea, but we have to at least try. Stood a little unsure, Thomas's crew agreed. They dropped hot cinders from Thomas's fire onto the rails to give him a good start. When all was ready, the little engine gave an enormous push, forcing his way through the thick snow. It was a real challenge continuing on, but Thomas was determined. He pushed, and he pushed, and he pushed! He was pushing as hard as he could, but there was just one drift after another. Go to it, Thomas, encouraged Toby from behind. I can do it, I can do it, Thomas panted breathlessly. Finally, the snow started to grow thinner, 
and they began to pick up the pace once more. And it wasn't long before they rolled, tired but triumphant, into the top station. Everyone cheered when they saw their beautiful tree. Well done, Thomas! Well done, Toby! they all said. Now the party can be ready just in time for tonight. Soon the tree was unloaded and taken to the town square, where it was soon decorated. That night it illuminated the whole square with its sparkling lights. The next morning the Fat Controller came to see Thomas. What will the Fat Controller say about the broken snowplow? he thought worriedly. But the Fat Controller was smiling. The townspeople had a wonderful party last night, he said. You were very brave to take on that snow without a plow. Thank you, sir, said Thomas. As you know, continued the Fat Controller, there aren't any spare snow plows, so you'll just have to do without yours for a while. Oh, thank you, sir, whistled Thomas, content as can be.